when I was in high school, I was, I was playing rugby, right? And when I was playing rugby, well, it was one day when we were just doing a fitness test, me and my rugby coach. And he saw me running, so I was put in a group with one of the guys. The guys was the fastest in the square at the time, and they put me in the same group. And we just had a fitness test, and I was na- I was neck and neck with them up to the line. Then my coach was like, do you think you can do track and field? I look at him, I'm like, no. He yeah. was like, I think, you have pot- I, I think you have the potential to even make the Olympics. Then I look at him, I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. whoa. <laughs> I, think, I think now you're going too far. I don't think I can really do this. Then he's like, well, I think you can do it. Yeah. So I'm going to introduce you to the track and food coach, and then you're going to start training there and see where it takes you. Then I look at him, I'm like, no, it's not going to happen. <laughs> then it was on a Saturday. Then the, the following week on a Monday, he, he told the coach about me, and the coach said he wanted to see me, but deep down I was like, I don't want to do this. Yeah. Like, That's it. So the whole week I didn't even go for practice or anything. Then the following week it was trials for like inter schools. Mm-hmm. But like we had, we were trials within the school, then we were, we were gonna have inter schools the following week. So I didn't I, I didn't want to go for trials and then he sent some little kid who was like a grade below me to call me and he was like the kid came and he's like you're being called by the sports director. The sports director is the rugby coach also. So he called me and I went to see him and he said, well, you didn't want to practice, so you don't know what to do, but I'm just going to put you in this race and see what happens. So he told me to take off my shoes. I didn't have shoes in the race. I didn't have shoes. I just went by the line without shoes. And it was eight people, seven people with spikes. And I was the only person. And I was the eighth person without spikes or nothing. Oh, man. Yeah. So the gun went and I beat everybody to the line. And my coach was like, the rugby coach looks at me and said, well, I think you can be a problem on the track, so you might as well start doing the track and field too. Then the, the track and field coach at the time called me and said, I want to see your practice on Monday. Um, okay. Then I don't know how they called my parents and stuff. They're like, uh, they, they called my parents to bring my documents to school and my parents brought my documents and everything went. But in those classes, you have to repeat again. So I paused my, my, my phone calls and then I was going into like my junior year of high school. Then. I didn't want to do track that year also because I was I was like I don't have the fitness I didn't do full training I didn't do anything I just went back to school in the spring in January. Then the track coach was like, "Just come." I think you are, you still have some. So I went back. Then I ran I ran all the championships I won again like I I won again and then we got to and then after that after that year I got introduced to then my cousin was like my cousin was in the US he said. I'm going to introduce you to a coach, Ken Hunden. I'm, I'm not sure if you heard him, yeah, but yeah. You sure? Ken Hunden, who's, the, who's, my, who's now my coach in Auburn. He said, uh-huh. I'm going to introduce you. Yeah, he said, I'm going to introduce you to, I'm going to introduce you to him. Just send me a video of you running and then we'll see. So he just, and then he, he then emailed him and he said, in the email it was like, I don't think you know me, but I know you because your mom taught me in third grade. Uh-huh. I have a, yeah, I have, a, I have a nephew of mine who's running track, and here's a video of him. So as soon as he got that video, he got interested in it. Then he said, he, then he texted his email back. He emailed him back and he said, hey, I want him with an exclamation mark. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so he's yeah. serious. <laughs> then, then he said, well, I don't think he has the great times to come to Division 1. So the option he has is I'll, I'll send him to a Division 2 coach. I sent him to Division Two coach. Then, if he runs well in these first two years, then you come to Division. I'll take him to Division One in his junior year of college. Oh, then I was okay. Then I had to write SATs, so I was waiting. I was all, all preparing for SATs and stuff. Then COVID hit. Oh man, that's that's that was really tough. Yeah, it was a tough yeah. year. So when COVID hit, then I was just waiting. Then they cancelled SAT, so I didn't now have to write an SAT exam. I just had to go straight to school. So now I was waiting for, I got all my papers and stuff. Now I was waiting for my visa. I was waiting for like my visa appointments and stuff. And appointments didn't open until April 2021. And I was, I had been waiting since December 2019. Oh my goodness. Yes. Or anyone who don't know if you're coming from Africa to the United States, it's it's very, very stressful to get a student visa. Sometimes you have to wait for, to get an appointment to be able to go for an interview and that interview you are not guaranteed of getting the visa so. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah so i so then i finally got an appointment 
Oh, I had, to, I had talked to the coach from the squad. I went to Carson Newman and he said, well, we have a guy who ran 10-3 and 20.7. And back in those days, a 10-3 and a 20.7 was pretty fast. Yeah. So I was like, oh, okay. And I just ran 21-1 from lane one. <laughs> so I was like, I look, I'm looking at 20.7. I'm like, okay, 20.7 is pretty fast. That year I didn't run the 100, so I, I, had a, I didn't have a time for the 100. Then he said, okay, we can get you. We can give you a full scholarship then. I said, okay got my scholarship then I went to the visa interview and the interview went wow then I came to D2 and then when I when I got to D2 I was like wow I don't I, I've never heard of anybody then I've, I've never heard of anyone and I don't know anything about D2 then I was like then then I I sat down I did my researches then I saw there was a guy called Asamati and I was like <laughs> okay this guy went to the Olympics this is a heavy hit I was like okay they're pretty fast dudes okay let's see what happens now I'm in D2. I get there. I'm in D2. Then I do my full training wall. Indoor season didn't really go as planned. My first week of school, like this was my first first indoor race. I ran 681 in 21.5. Well, 681 was pretty decent. That was a decent performance, yeah. Then I got hurt in February, so I didn't even run the rest of the indoor season. I just came back with co- indoor conference. I finished sixth in the 60, and I finished 21st in the, <laughs> in the 200 meters, and I was like, damn. Yeah. yeah. Welcome to America. Welcome to America. That's what I told myself. Welcome to America. <laughs> oh, I got, now I got to put in the work. I got to go back and put in the work. So I watched D, D2 Nationals that year. As a mighty won the 60. Then he was second in the 200 meters. And I was like, hmm. Then I saw this other, this other kid called Brendan Miller. Right now he's now at Kentucky. He ended up going to Kentucky. It was a great Valley State. That's the guy who beat As a mighty. And I was like, hmm. So they are pretty fast people in D2. Yeah. Right? <laughs> Yeah, that, that's when I was like, okay, I gotta wake up now. Yeah. So I went back. I did. I worked out. I, I then went back to work. Got the few things right. Then he, my coach told me that I think you can you can be at nationals and you can score in the top three. Like, nationals, top three as a freshman. That would be crazy. That would be cool. Then we went back to work and just said, just trust me and see what happens. So I went back. Then first meet, I ran. I think I. I ran 10-7 in the 100, that was my first meet in a negative wind. Then I ran 21-1 and I tied my PR. Then he said, okay, just trust me again and we'll go, we'll drop a 20. Went back to the drawing board, trusted him again. Then I came back, second meet, 20.8. Uh-huh. 10-4-0. <laughs> then I was like, okay, now we can make it. In the time, I was not, I was number two in D two. Now I made I had made the cut. I was now number two in D two, and I was like, okay, now we're working. Went back to another meet, then went back to the drawing board, worked out again, came back. Second, second, third meet, twenty point eight again in the negative wind. This was now minus one point five wind, and I went twenty point eight again, same time. Then he said, "Yeah, you're in good shape. Let's just keep working." Worked again. Then we now we're in conference. Yeah. I ran 10 3. I ran 10 3. And I ran 20.8 again. And he said, You're pretty consistent. You can have a you can see you can have a breakthrough at nationals. Now I get to nationals. And now with that 20.8, I was number eight in G2. So like the top the tick top 16. Then so I was good. Then yeah. we get to nationals. Now we get to nationals. First day. First day of, of, so I made the four by one out of the 200. So I was running three events. So like the nationals, if you know, they, they start with the four by one. Yeah. So I opened up with the four by one, then we ran 39.6, which was a school record at the time. So I ran 39.6, then I ran the 100 on the first day, then I ran 10.34, and I went to the final where I was number, number six going into the final. And then Azamari was in the heat before me, then he first started, and I was like, damn. Yeah. Nationals are really scary. So he scared me a bit. My yeah. heart started. Am I really gonna make this final? I don't know. Let's see what happens. And then the other, the, the dude who ended up winning the two hundred also, the Brendan Miller dude, he four started also. Oh, so, <laughs> we have hitters out now. <laughs> now the final was anyone's game. Yeah. And like the guy was leading when you the final, at a ten two five. Then the rest were ten threes. So the other six guys were ten threes. The number eight at a ten four. Number eight and nine in a ten four. So because it was nine lane. So like now the final was anyone's game. Yeah. It, when I went back, they were like, my coach was like, I'm just going through it, so I put pressure on myself. Then came back the second day, 200 meters now. 
I'm in lane three. And then I was like, okay. Then we get to the line, gun goes 20.4. Mm. I was like, ooh. From 20.8 to 20.4, even though it was a wind, 20.4 was like plus 2.5. Oh, not a crazy wind, though. That was, a, that was not a crazy wind, but it was it was windy also. So I was like, yeah. 20.4 plus 2.5. Okay. That's when the coach we had, we had brought me to D2, to, to D2, Coach Ken, he reached out to my coach. He just put that image of of, of a shocked emoji, like that emoji that that is. Yeah. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Then he sent him that emoji and he was like, yeah, he ran. Then my coach was like, yeah, he ran, he ran that time, but it was windy. Then he said, no, I don't care about the wind. The 20.4 is a 20.4. 20.4, yeah, you run it. Yeah, then uh, the, my, the, the guy was mentoring me also, who was helping me with the visa process, who my coach once coached, Brian Zinga, he was a 2008 Olympic finalist. Uh, he was the one who was like helping me throughout the whole process. He was the one who was telling me to be patient, just trust the coach and everything also. And he, he reached out to me and he said, Boy, you went 20.4 as a freshman and you just came from Zim. Yeah. Yeah, you, you, you have a big you you problem. Might be a problem. <laughs> so, and then I watched the other heats and then I, I was leading him to going into the final. Because the guy was after me. Mine was a 2041. He had been a 2044. Yes. So it was him. It was me. It was Brendan Miller. Then it was Azamali. So that was the top three now going to the final. So now in the final, I was in lane six. Brendan Miller was in lane seven. Azamali was in lane eight. We get to finals day. The four by one goes. We were leading until the third leg. Then as soon as Azamali got the stick, he was on third. Then he closed everyone down to first. And if, because I was running the back straight. Mm -hmm. So like I had a gap on the back straight, then I gave my third leg, then he gave the fourth leg, then Azamari closed him down and all. And we ended up finishing third because the other team, Ashley and also closed us down. So we're third in the four by one. I was like, okay, cool. The hundred comes. Now it's a showdown between every like it was now everyone's game. Anybody that means the gun goes and we were flat line until like 90 meters. That's when people started separating until at 90. So number one and number one then ran. It was a minus, was a minus 0 0.9. Number one and ran 10.4. Then num from number two up to number seven, I got 10 fives. Oh. But that was a crazy race. Yeah. So yeah, I, I ended up finishing third. Then in the final, in the final now, it was I was now facing as a mad in the final. And we all know as a mad was one of his start was just, he's just out of this world. I, until today, I don't even know how, how <laughs> that was. So he started and he pulled away like the first 60 meters, he was already gone. And then now it's now me and Brandon Miller trying to catch up to him. Then we got on the straight. Mm -hmm. Then Brandon Miller just kicked a different gear. Then he closed him, he closed, he caught him. Yeah. He caught him at 180. That was very untold of. So I was like, oh, he caught him there. He was he won the race and he ran 20.2, 2021, I think. And as a man, he ran 2024. Then I ran 20.4, which was consistent. Then my mentor yeah. was like, that was pretty consistent, consistent season. We had a great season. And yeah, then went went out to meet with my mentor over the break. And then he said, well, you ran 20.4 and 10.3, which are pretty good times. You can take you did one. Now you might have to say goodbye to your, to your <laughs> D2 coach. Now go D1. So you might have to get on the transfer portal and transfer. Yeah. But I'm enjoying D2. It was like, well, we have bigger goals. You can't you can yeah. stay place in D2 because now the two guys, the top two, the two guys who have been nationals, one had transferred to Kentucky and Benji at 10 Pro. Yeah. So it was now down me. Like mm -hmm. I wasn't the next person to look at. Then he said, well, you might have to get on the transfer portal, finish your sophomore year, then transfer. So I was like, okay, cool. Got on the portal, committed to Auburn. Then I went back and I finished my sophomore year. Now in my sophomore year, I was like, okay, I don't think there's going to be anybody fast or anybody's going to give me a problem. I might as well just go ahead and win it, sweep everything. I sweep it. Get to January. This was the interesting part. We get to January. I just heard a random name in West Texas called Isaac Barton. I was like, <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> 
Azamari is bad. A lot of Azamari. Azamari is bad. He's bad in West Texas. It might be it might be an interesting season. Yeah. In the national, right? Yeah, that was the one I won the in two in the two hundred. In the two hundred all. Oh, and so, the South African guy won the sixty. No, he was second. Isaac won okay, the sixty. Okay, no, Isaac won the sixty. Yeah. So we get to national. So those two guys were in the first heat. Then I was in the second heat. So the South African guy popped up because Isaac was the favorite in that heat. Then the South African guy just came from nowhere and ran six six six. That was his PR. And Isaac, I think he ran six six nine. So they were like, okay. Then I went in the. In the I was in the second heat. I was, I think I was, we had a blanket finish in our heat. So I was, I, had, I ran 6.75 and number one had ran 6.73. So we had a blanket finish that me and number, number two and three were all given 6.75. So we both went in the final. Then in the final, I didn't run, I didn't run my, my own race. Like I just tried to post a 6.6 in my, in, in me. Then I ended up finishing seven. Then Isaac and him were first and second. So yeah, I ended up finishing seven. Then we went to the 200 meters. Now in the 200, I was like, okay. The, in the heat, I had gone 20.6 6 from lane four. And you know, I would type lane three and four, I didn't do it. Yeah. Yeah. So I ran 20.4. I went 20.6, sorry. I went 20.6. And then I was the favorite to win. So now I'm in lane five. And then the South African, the, the South African dude was in lane six. Isaac was in lane four, then I was in lane five. So that was a pretty fast heat. So the gun ran the, 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 the the South African guy in six, lane, lane six just got a start that I didn't I don't even know until the day where he got that start from. <laughs> he just got it out of nowhere. I asked him about that race, like, bro, where did you get that start from? And he's like, I don't know. He just happened on the day. <laughs> yeah. And then I think Isaac got hurt, so he didn't really like run the whole race. He just jogged the whole, the whole race because he was hurt. He was saying he had something with his hamstring. So me and the South African dude went. Then we went, I went 20.5, he went 20.7. So we finished one, two. Then we ended up, we just finished indoors. Then my my coach at Auburn then reached out to me and said, well, we had a great indoor season. Now let's go and finish the work outdoor. And then you can come to Auburn. Then we'll finish the work here. Yeah. Hello. Okay, coach. That's cool. 40.0, 40. I think it was 40.0, yeah. Then we, you know, I hit to a fourth, so I didn't progress to the next heat. Then West Texas went 38. No. <laughs> I think it was 38.9. And then we were like, ooh. Then they made the final. Then I think they finished third again. They went 38 9. They lowered it down again to another 38 9. So they were leading now and we were like number, number five. Then I ran the 100. Then I ran 10 1. That was my first my first ever 10 1. And that was my PR because I had finished the season with the 10 3. Yeah. And just opened 10 1. In a, in a, in a 0 0.1 win plus 0 0.1. So oh, that was, that was good. That was pretty, that was pretty fast. And then I think, yeah, every, then we just went on. Then I think the other, there was a guy from my from my team also, Devon Moore. He was a senior. Then he ran nine 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 in plus three. Oh so no! I was me and him. Yeah. Now me and him number one and two on the lay on the ranks. Then the following week, I think Isaac then ran ten o. Mm -hmm. And then there was a guy called he's from Ghana. I think he's called Joseph Manu. Joseph yeah. Manu. <laughs> yeah. And he also went ten zero. And then I was. <laughs> One, two, three, four. I was now number four. Yeah. And these two guys are number two. No, number number two and three. Yeah. And then, then that was the top four. And then we just went on, went to conference. I swept every I swept everything. I think we only lost the four by one. To like the South African guys who Leno Ryan. They were the ones who the four by one. Then the second then got now we got to nationals. Those nationals were very interesting. We go to Colorado, it's on altitude. The wind was like hitting plus five. Plus five, plus plus four point nine. Like I, I, I don't. I, I think the only day we had a good win was the prelims day. When the, in the hundred, the first day. Yeah. That's when zero point ones and zero point fives. But the finals day we only had plus fives, plus fours, plus threes. I think the least thing we had was like a three point three at that meet. Um, in the final. So we get to nationals the first day. I'm in the same heat with the South African dude. We ran ten. Then he 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 won he won the heat with ten one nine. Then I was second with ten two one. Then everybody else like then the other heats they were all running ten twos. And I think the slowest time going into the finals was like a ten three zero. So it was pretty 
pretty pretty fast. Like, pretty stacked final. Yeah. Then we get then the hundred goals. Then the next day we had the two hundred, and in my two hundred heat I went twenty point three, and I the fastest time went into the final. And I think I had the least wind also on the second day because my heat I, had three, I think I had three point two. Then the other heat had plus fours, plus four point threes and four point nines. Yeah. So it was a pretty crazy win there. Yeah. So we ran. Then everybody ran, then I made the final, we, we all made the final, then in the final now, the last day in the final, we had a four by one final, that's when West Texas dropped the D2 record. Oh yeah. That was a crazy man, then you were second. Then, I think you know Ryan, the team that had beat us in conference, they dropped the stick. So yeah, that, that was how, how, how the, the final went. Then the 100 final, now it was, it was like, I was putting, I was in lane eight because I didn't win my heat, so they put me in lane eight. Then the guy who had won our heat, the South African guy Dario, he was in lane five. Then I think Isaac was in seven. Yeah. So Joseph was in lane three because he also didn't win his heat. Then the guy who ran nine nine was in lane six, I think. Yeah, lane six. Then lane seven was another kid who had ran six six indoors from Pittsburgh State. His name was, I think it was Carmichael. So it was a pretty stacked, stacked final. Yeah. The gun went in, everybody left me in the blocks. Everyone left me. I was I was number nine coming out coming out of the blocks. And then at six at sixty I was number I was I was number I was still number nine. Then the last forty, I don't know where I got that kick from. Like I don't even know until the day like where that came from. And I just <laughs> the, the big down guy the kick. Yeah. yeah, the big the big guy just closed. Like even if you check the video, like I just came out of nowhere. Then I then I then I, I passed everyone, then I, I, I finished the 10.02, then Isaac was second with the 10.03, the number three and the 10.04, so it was 10.02, 10.03, 10.04. That was very, very close. Yeah. So, so so that, that was a pretty, that was a pretty, that was a pretty interesting race. Until the day, I, I still find that race interesting. What, what, do, what do you think is, is the difference between uh, Division 1 and Division 2, like the training and all that? What do you think is the difference between the, the, the two? I've been working with Coach Ken, Coach Ken Anden, and I think, I think it's really like the level, the level of competition, really, that made me like, and the training, the training in, in division, in, Div, in division one, I think the trainings are the same. They're, they're almost similar. Like my coach from G2 and my coach and Coach Ken, they, they really have like similar training programs. So I won't really say like the training was different, but I think it was the level of competition now because we can we call deal division one competitions, we can we call like Olympics, Diamond Leagues. <laughs> every week we will be facing a person who's running 9-9, 20.0, we can we call so I think the comp it's really the competition in division one that really separates division one and two because a lot of people like run fast in division one. Like they they drop faster and we can we call so it's really like you have to always bring your A game to the table. It's not like in D2 where you can like be complacent. And now they're regionals also. So you, yeah. you go to also and they take top 24 to go to national. They, they take top 24 the first day, then the last day they take top 12 from each region, from the two regions, then we all go to national. So I think it's really like the level, it's just the level of competition that's different. Did, did how, how influential was your training group in, in, in your performance this year? Well, um, when we were in the fall, like my, my coach called me to his office and he said, we have like the top, the best, we, we probably have the, our training group is probably like the top 10 training group in the world. So it's it's going to be a pretty crazy training group because we have those two Nigerians, then we have, we have the Malaysian guy, Azim, and we have the South African dude also, we had transferred, we had finished one and two with me, D2, so. Oh, he also transferred with you. He also transferred and he was, he's my roommate at Auburn. So like he was like it's gonna be a pretty crazy group, and you just have to hang in there. If they beat you in practice, it's okay. That will push you to be better when it comes to competition. So practice is really gonna be competitive, and if you if we carry that competitive spirit from practice to competition, it's gonna be easy for you. So that's what he really told me, and he said just trust it. And then our training group also has a great brotherhood. Like everybody does it. We don't just care about each other in practice. We even care each other off the track. Like. We eat, we eat together in the cafeteria. We help each other with homework and everything. So it's 
it's just it's not you know it's not just in practice it's more than it's just more than practice that so yeah. um you you'll be the second uh zimbabwean to uh qualify in the in the two in the 200 meters yes uh, what are you looking forward to because i know uh the other guy, I forgot. In- Kali, Kali. Yeah, he's he's also he's also he's also gonna compete in, in the 200 meters. So, uh, how how excited are you to have your fellow countryman uh, qualify in the same event with you in, in, in Paris? Uh, I'm very excited because because now now we know that Zimbabwe now we we coming back because the last time Zimbabwe was really like well known in the Olympics was in 2008, if I'm not mistaken. One one Zimbabwe made, made the final. And the, the guy who's mentoring me, my Brian Zinga, made the final. That was the last time people knew that okay, Zimbabwe is fast, guys. Ever since then, like people people were qualifying for like Olympics, but they were not. They weren't really like putting in like yeah. So, but now this year, me and him bringing back Zimbabwe, back, bringing Zimbabwe back to life. It's it's a great it's a great thing for for not just Zimbabwe but for the whole like. Oh, I'll probably yeah. say that we rank in the top ten in the world. Like we're both in the top ten, the top ten rankings. So it's really good. And now we're just gonna try go there and put in a show and show them that Zimbabwe we also there. That's nice. That's nice. Uh, what would you advise any uh, young and upcoming Zimbabwean out there uh, who is looking for an inspiration? Who'll be watching you to compete and raise the flag of uh, Zimbabwe high in Tokyo? What are you gonna give them? Uh, what advice are you gonna uh, give them? I'll probably say, put God first, trust your coach, and just be patient, and everything else will play out for itself. Don't don't put pressure on yourself. Just enjoy the moment. Just that's that's just that's that. Yeah. Do you, do you have uh, any special goals? Uh, you, you know, as you are heading to Paris, do you have any special goals you wanna hit in Paris? Oh, um, I wouldn't say I, I I don't really like putting putting stuff out there. Yeah. To pressure myself, but I'll just say I I just want to go to Paris and execute a great execute a good race and just have fun. And I'll let everything else take care of itself because I know if I do those things, everything else will take care of itself. So I'll probably just say I'm just gonna go execute a good race and have and enjoy the moment. You're gonna take it uh, race after race, uh, round after, after round. Yes. That is, that is awesome. So I want to give you a scenario and you tell me uh, what you think about the scenario. So would you prefer to be leading in the race and fade later on and finish third or come back from behind and win uh, a race? That's a very great question. Uh, I would probably say come back from the, come, come back, from the back because I know, I know for a fact that I won't be the first. I'll never be the first person to 30. But I like. I like. I like. I'll. I'll. I'll rather like stay with the pack and just pull away the last. The last hundred. The last thing. But what difference does it does it make uh, when you are leading and then you are coming from behind? What what, what difference does it make when you are leading or when you are coming from behind? I would probably say when you come when you come when you. When you when you're leading, you don't know what ha- what happens behind you. Like you might just find a steam train just come come here and hammer you from the from the from the back. Then when you're when you when you're coming from behind, I think for me I'll probably say coming from behind is that's what I'm always used to. That's what I've been always doing and that's what I'm used to doing. So I'll probably say coming from behind is is good and bad at the same time because one day you might find a hot shot that just pulls away from the from the get go, yeah. and I mean, trying to play catch up is, is might be might be might be hard because now you'll be trying to force things up to catch yeah. that press. So I'd probably say just be patient and smooth, and everything will be good. Uh, which and finally, uh, which athlete are you looking forward to compete with in Paris uh, in your events? Which athlete are you looking forward to? Which. I would probably say, I'll probably say my countryman Kali. Yeah, I'll probably say my countryman Kali because I feel like me and him, we're not, we're putting, we're not just, we're not just putting, we're not putting like the country, we're not putting the country up, and 
me and him, we, we have worked it. We have worked very hard to get to get to this point, and now we just, we just wanna make the whole world know that Zimbabwe will also come. So I'm probably say I'm looking forward to competing with Kali, competing with Kali, and making making the whole world know that Zimbabwe is also there. Yeah.